So in this video, we're going to show you how to install a speedometer on a motorized bike. Before we do, I want to show you a little bit about this speedometer, and I don't know if it's going to work because some electronic speedometers uh, get interference from the CDI, and so sometimes it's better to go with the manual, you know, non-electric one. And this is a really cheap one. You probably want to get one off Bikeberry because uh, this one's like seven bucks on eBay, and it took forever. Like it was supposed to get here in just a couple days, and they told me it was going to get here like. A month after I ordered it, so and they call it some sort of e packet from China or something, anyway. Um, so basically, the first thing you need to know about this watch, or it's actually it kind of is a watch, um, is it uses a regular watch battery. And let's see if I can take the back off because this is the way it comes. So actually, I actually had it upside down, it's a good thing I took the back off because so it wouldn't have worked. Um, anyway, you got a little watch battery down in here, like kind of goes in your computer and stuff. You need to have that in there. You don't want to take it out because if you do it's going to reset everything so unless you want to reset it start over keep that in there um so it's going to lock this back on the back part the mounting part with the sensor that goes down to the wheel okay so basically it's a clock you got your time right here like a watch right but then when you turn it on um now all of a sudden you've got your miles per hour if that's what you want, or you can have kilometers per hour, you got degrees, which right now it says 81 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm guessing it needs time to adjust the temperature. Um, and it has a bunch of other things that you can do, like time. Oh, whoops. Okay, let's see if I can. Okay, so we have odometer, distance, uh, MX, S, average speed, TM, SW, uh, CDD, something like CDT, calories, fat and all that and it's trying to tell me that the battery is low yesterday it was not telling me it was low so perhaps I need to change the battery which will reset everything now oh now it went away the battery flashing thing went away okay so we might be good it came on by the way in the box it's on so it may have sat for a month or more um what you get with this to mount it you get your instructions and zip ties and all kinds of things instructions are really important because when you first turn it on, it has a four digit readout at the bottom. And you have to select the right one, and that's your tire size. So, um, if you're, let's see, where's our tire sizes? 26 inch is, let's see if I can find just 26. 26 inch is 2115. Um, and you can go clear up through. 2026 on 26 inches. I don't know why, but that, that's the range on the numbers. The 24 inches is at uh, 1890. We got uh, 20 inches is 1565 and 1450 and 1490. 18 inches 1340. 16 inches 1245. 14 inches 10055. And there's all kinds of other like. Uh, um, I could see which I'm guessing is centimeters or something. So I have 38 is 2180, 35, 216, 28, uh, 2136, 23 centimeters is 2086, and then we got 20, which is at 1938. I don't know. Uh, it could be completely off, but anyways, that's that's the chart. And then you know, all your functions and stuff there, which are important. So keep the instructions. Once you got that dialed in, and that's not telling the batteries dead anymore, so hopefully we're okay. Um, that's why it's important to keep the construction because the battery dies, you need to reset everything. So we got our zip ties, that's what you mount it with, and then we got a little magnet that goes on the wheel, the zip ties, and then, then we have uh, two adhesive strips to mount it with, which are important. So the big one is going to go under this, and the small one is going to go under the sensor that goes by the tire. So I'll go install that and see what we can accomplish with this. Um, so let's put the sticky stuff back in here for now, I guess. So 
our first two important things, speedometer mount and this mount, and then everything else should be based off of that. So we'll go look and see how this all looks. So let's try to start by finding a place for the main mount. Now my throttle cable is in the way. Um, I would have to take it out of this, disconnect it to completely run it like up under here or something so I could put this uh, here instead. But I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I can kind of turn this up like that to get this underneath. And then we can kind of mount it right here. So now I gotta figure out where I'm gonna mount this guy and then I gotta tighten up everything so All right, so it's all installed and ready to go. Now I just gotta find out if it's actually gonna work. And the only way to know is to take it down the road. So the final verdict on the speedometer, uh, basically it works as long as the engine is not running. Um, as far as I know, it didn't work while the engine was running because I couldn't read it and it reset. Going back to kilometers and Celsius and all that wonderful stuff. So um, what I'm going to say is it should at least get you by for legal purposes. But as far as actually working, um, you're gonna want the mechanical speedometer. Now I wanted, the reason I went with this one originally is because I'm gonna put a front basket on here and I thought the front basket was gonna end up mounting down there. And I figured if it did, then it wouldn't be compatible with the, uh, with the mechanical speedometer. But 
it looks like since the basket is going to mount it here and not down to there, um, eventually anyway, that I might be able to do the mechanical speedometer instead. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and just push you. Please click those links in the description of the video. Consider giving us a donation on Patreon. Check out ChristianCourse.com, all that good stuff, but make sure that you check out how to win in court. All right.